So here is how I've decided to mount these panels with the screw coming up this way. Uh, they don't even come close uh, to reaching the top, so I'm not worried about it like scratching the roof or anything. Uh, but I figured that, you know, you put the bolt in, you've got a washer underneath, and then you've got a, a split washer up here, and then you screw the nut down. I decided to kind of do it like this because I think that I should be able, if I ever have to replace a panel without taking the brackets off since they're going to be glued down with the VHB tape, uh, I should be able to, you know, get a, a wrench in there or a socket and be able to loosen that up enough that I can remove a panel and not have to completely remove the bracket altogether. Before I even put them up there, I will be testing out and making sure that they do uh, produce the rated amount of voltage. So I'll be doing this to all four corners on all six panels, and then I will be placing my VHB tape right here after I clean it up with a little bit of denatured alcohol to make sure there's no finger oils or anything here. And I'll be doing the exact same thing with the denatured alcohol on the roof wherever these are going to be sitting so that it can make a really good solid connection. All right, first set of brackets are on. These are actually really, really good high quality brackets. I really like these. They feel very sturdy, very thick. They don't feel like cheap, flimsy brackets or anything. So they should hold up really, really well. Looks like the total lift on it is roughly about an inch and a half to two inches. I haven't actually measured it, but I should get more than enough airflow underneath these things. No problem. It's a good looking panel, I think. If nothing else, it's going to provide me with a lot of extra shade, even though I'm going to be in full sun. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this first panel to make sure that it's producing electricity. And uh, what we're basically gonna be measuring here is open voltage. This is open circuit voltage. There we go. And open circuit voltage on this particular panel was rated at 20 volts and we are just below that. So this is a damn good panel. All right, so first panel tested, time to get all the rest of them done. Uh, I just hope that the sun actually, you know, these clouds finally break and I get a little bit of sun so I can get some more accurate testing done because this is just not going to do. So I also wanted to do a quick test with the Energy Kodiak. Uh, I recently ordered this uh, special cable that they make. It's basically their Nutric cable and plugged it up to the solar panels. So standard connectors, plugged it right in. And this thing will not kick on. This So the inverter is not on. So this panel will not light up. And this will not light up unless the solar panel itself is actually generating energy. Unfortunately, we still have nothing but cloudy skies out here. Waiting on the sun to show up and help a brother out. Where do you want this going? Huh? Put that wherever you want it. Well, I was just putting them over there, but we're getting full over there. Well, put this one. one back up there and just push them out. Yeah, we can do that. She's helping. She doesn't give a shit. She just be crawling up on the roof of the camper. I'm helpful. So what we're doing is we are taking the alcohol and wiping the bottom of the brackets. so that the VHB tape will adhere. Now we gotta determine. Got the... Ivan, alcohol. What about it? I need it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, so if we do like that, this will be an. Oh, God. 
Okay, I've got to not be looking at the camera screen. <laughs> All right. So if we put wires facing that way, wires, so wires together. Okay. They'll meet in the middle. And then so wires together. Have one box up here and one box down here. Yeah. They'll meet in the middle. They'll run it down the middle. Yeah, I'll run, I'll connect those two together and run it all the way down here to the middle, right around in this area. And this is where, this is where the junction box will be. Okay. Right in the middle. So, those so all the wires. So I actually, I think it might even be better if we. Move these up. Yeah. To kind of match this, this set over here. Uh, hold on. Grab that box. This one? Yeah, you can move it up a couple inches and then it'll match. Okay. Roughly. All right, so this will be roughly how it'll go. So two there, two there. Meet in the middle, meet in the middle. Junction box right up here. Are we doing this side first? Yep. And then once we get that way, then I'll probably try and maybe put the junction box up here. Maybe I'll put the junction, no, it'll probably be better here because that way I don't have to run the wires very far from each. So first two were on there and I actually did drill. I said I wasn't going to, but I just didn't feel like with the old texture on the roof that it was actually going to hold. Well, this happened. I have no refrigerator power whatsoever. I have no hallway lights whatsoever. I have no bed light. I have no bathroom lights. The AC outlet still works. This 12 volt outlet is dead. This side light over here works fine. That AC outlet works. This AC outlet works. That 12 volt outlet is dead. So I've got solar. But no refrigerator. It's like one step forward, two steps back. Now I've got to figure out what the hell I hit up there on the roof. I had originally said that I was not going to drill into the roof, but then I, I felt like the curvature of the roof was just too much. So I used the VHB tape and some screws to screw into the roof. And uh, yeah, so now I have no refrigerator. So now I'm trying to debate whether to trace down the problem ignore the problem and just put a bunch of battery operated LED lights or something like that which would probably be the easier one instead of trying to track down the issue but that also means I've got to spend you know at least three four hundred dollars on a new refrigerator uh, probably fifty to a hundred dollars in rechargeable LED lights to stick in the bathroom in the hallway and under the bed or maybe I can just use some strip LED lights. I don't know. All I know is it's always something. It's always something. All right, so it's getting pretty late in the day and I've been up here on the roof several times today. Uh, got some uh, decor and stuff on the, uh, the screws on the panels. Everything is fully mounted, so I've got four back here and two up here for 600 total watts. Uh, unfortunately, because I have decided, or I had decided, that I was going to run at least these two in series uh, so that I had a higher voltage, uh, the Energy Kodiak won't accept anything higher than 36 volts. Uh, when I tested this, uh, the open circuit gave me a full reading of 40 volts coming from the panels. So right now, the panels together in series are reading about 37.1. And that's just too high. That's just way too high. It's just, it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to run all these panels in parallel, which, you know, it's not necessarily a horrible thing because at least if you run all, all in parallel... If this one gets shaded, this one will still work. If this one gets shaded, this one will still work. But if you run them in series and one of them gets shaded, the whole thing goes down. Now you might be thinking, well, Mark, you know, that's a, you know, that's a good thing, right? So you, you've got some redundancy there. Yeah, but the unfortunate thing 
is that when you run everything in parallel, you don't increase your voltage at all. And when you don't increase the voltage, that means you have to use a thicker gauge wire in order to run all of your cables. Uh, because if everything's in parallel, then when you get to the junction, when you get to the uh, branch connector, I don't know where mine are at, but when you combine all those uh, and you get to your branch connector, your amps are going to be extremely high. And if you have extremely high amperage, that's going to heat up the wire. And you need thick gauge wire uh, in order to keep all that going. You do not want to be using thin wire. It'll get way, way too hot. Probably burn it. So, unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to be using these. So, these are my uh, six-panel branch connectors. So, I'm going to try and junction them all up into... Uh, a single point so when it gets to this point after you plug in all your panels into these to this side and then you've got your main terminals coming out of this end you're gonna have a lot of amps you're gonna have a lot of current coming out of your your mains I was gonna run them in series so I had bought these just in case it was gonna work and then here it would have been 40 40 volts and then the amperage would have been around 18.75 or something. But that's not going to work. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't do it like that. So I guess, uh, I guess when I bring it all you know, into this junction box, I'm going to have a much, much higher amperage. Which means that I will probably just cut this wire. This is a 4 gauge wire instead of a 10 gauge. And... This should be able to handle the amount of amperage. It says that it can handle up to 300 amps. So if that's the case, I should be good because uh, it's not going to be anywhere close to, to uh, 300 amps, but it is going to be 6, 12, 24, 38, or 36. 36 or 38 amps. So, I mean, I've also got this 10 gauge wire. Honestly, this is probably going to be just fine, but, you know, just so that I don't have a whole lot of voltage drop on the very end, I might just go ahead and use the uh, use the booster cable wires. I mean, it was only 11 bucks, and I think this was like $30. Okay, well, it's the end of the day, and I did, in fact, connect all of my panels together. Uh, obviously, I was getting just over 12 volts I think I was getting about 17 volts and I mean that's fine uh, I wasn't able to really check amperage because it would probably be it's probably gonna be too high for my multimeter my multimeter it's only gonna accept about 10 amps but all the individual panels gave me a good reading so I know that they're all sending something to the final branch connector the problem is, is it's just a whole mess of wires uh, I didn't like do any like wire maintenance or cleanup tonight. I just don't feel like it and it's starting to get dark already. It's uh, a little after 7 and officially sundown is in 3 minutes. So starting to turn off really cool outside as well. It's supposed to get down to about 39 tonight. It's just been one of those days. So i got solar panels and I've got plenty of electricity just not to my refrigerator now if it's not one thing it will be another i can assure you yeah but what's life without a few hiccups along the way all right guys so that's all i'm gonna do for today hope you guys enjoyed it uh it's a pain in the ass it really is if you ever plan on doing solar make sure you've got a strong stomach or else you're probably not going to have a very good day at all. So that's all I got for you all today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs up this video. Subscribe to the channel if you really loved it. If you really watch, like watching me in anguish. Otherwise, I will see you guys again on the next one. Peace.